part of the collaborative inquiry. But the one thing that happens, and if you've ever been in my in my uh, office, is um, people don't like to be, especially teachers, they're very proud of their work. Right? And if, they're, if, they're, if you're showcasing great work that's happening, they want to be showcased as well. Mm -hmm. So I get buzzes in my classroom, can you come and tweet this out? Can you tweet this out? If I go upstairs, they're like, can you, can you come and tweet this out? Like, they want to see it because they don't want to be the, the classes left behind. Everybody else is on Twitter and the kids are asking, how come, they're cl how come 218's on Twitter and we're not? My parents want to see me on Twitter. So it, it builds this whole greater <coughs> community of purpose, of purpose of learning. Any questions, comments? Clarifications? Just on uh, a side note, I guess, how many of your staff members um, are using Twitter, for you say, and have a classroom, I guess, Twitter account? Okay. Um, well, our pre-primary, we have two kindergarten classes. Done. They're amazing. They, they tweet out everything. Um, primary, uh, we have Ms. Keenan. Um, the uh, junior, we have uh, Ms. Pietrowski. Um, but the interesting thing is, do we have other? Yes. It's um, interesting because many of them have Twitter, and they're kind of that voyeur. So they will say, "Oh, I saw what you posted on Twitter," or "I saw the superintendent was in such and such a class," and or "I saw um, Angela Gauthier." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, Angela Gauthier, the the director of education, mentioned such and such about your classroom the other day. They know things that I don't know about myself on Twitter because they're watching Twitter, but they're just so afraid to actually participate in that community. Right? And it's what um, Alex was saying this morning. There's like a, a void around that encircles these classrooms. And, you know, our classrooms, not to be full of ourselves, are like this bright, shining light of all this fun and participation. So I think eventually they will. They don't want to be left out, so they'll call me to tweet it out. Like, for example, one they of call, yeah. Yeah, they, call, they, they call, they call the talk. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll call, if I'm not there, this is hilarious too, if I'm in a principal's meeting, they'll call Ms. Keenan and Ms. Piotrowski to tweet out their work. So mm -hmm. they're interested in the process, um, but again, you move with the coalition of the willing, mm -hmm. and you move forward. And, you know, if, if you don't move with the coalition of the willing, you're, if you wait for everybody to have 100% buy it, you just won't you just won't be able to move forward with the idea. And I believe firmly again that the idea is based on great pedagogical practice and it's based on the idea of assessment for as and of learning. It's based on the idea of visible learning. It's based on firm research. I you know I've written articles on the research that it's uh, based on. Um, I just believe firmly in the whole project and the purpose of it. And I think it's transformed my vision of teaching and learning. It's made me more engaged as a principal. Uh, I find it interesting. And so I can't believe, and I know that other people find it interesting too when they go on to the store of life. When they look at kindergarten kids in the schoolyard, the teacher's driv drawn out a map of the world. The students are sitting on it according to population density. And the map in kindergarten, for example, is equal and unequal distribution. They made big coins. They distributed equally. Then they begin taking it away. And they talk to kids about how that feels, and they look for solutions. When people see that video online and start engaging with the teacher about that kind of dialogue, it builds. It's interesting. You might not believe in it. I've been called a communist. <laughs> <laughs> been called worse. <laughs> you, you, ultimately, you might not believe in it, but you find it engaging and interesting. In terms of parental engagement, um, you know, in some school communities, the resources aren't there for parents to become engaged because of whatever reason, depending on the socioeconomic status of the, of the neighborhood. How, how, what strategies have you put into place to engage those parents who otherwise wouldn't be engaged? They all have a cell phone press. And they all have data at some point in time. Or they go to the library. And again, you have to bring them in for the purpose to go online. They're not going to go on your Twitter account. Like, if you have a Twitter account and all it does is publicize, publicize what's in the school newsletter and once in a while something, they're not going online to see your Twitter account. Mm -hmm. okay. if they, and they are not going to go online if all they see is pretty work and hands. And they're not going to go online if you're just you know, uh, uh, staging a picture once in a while. They want to see their kids. They want to see what their kids are wearing. They want to see that their kids are engaged. They want to see that their kids are succeeding. And so the whole idea of publishing kids' pictures and the learning and them talking and the videos and the events, 
has brought the has brought the parents in. So even though we are not in a privileged uh, socioeconomic background, I I believe firmly from <laughs> scrolling through, <laughs> although it's hard to tell sometimes, that I have about 150 parents in my community who are actively engaged in Twitter, and, and I believe everybody else is a voyeur because I talk to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, and my parent counts, I've been at, um, I've been tweeting out at conferences before, and we have the, the, the train of tweets, and all of a sudden my parent council president comes up online, and she, there she is, tweeting out about, because I believe firmly if I'm taking time out of the school, and I'm part of the community, that I share my learning. Mm -hmm. So they engage in that which is shocking to me. They're interested in the dialogue about teaching and learning. It has to do with them personally. It's about their kids. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the strategies. Like really, your tweets can't be perfect. Tweeting is not a perfect sport. Like you'll see me, I've been tweeting out this entire conference. And like, do, do you think I'm stopping and editing every single tweet? I'm absolutely not. And there'll be mistakes in tweets. And you've got you've to recognize that the world is an imperfect world. And if you're going to not do it because you're worried about this or this or that or this, you have a certain professional guidelines that's going to be in, firmly implanted in the back of your mind. You are not going to trespass it. You will be fine. So you just have to be really confident about just putting it out there and seeing what people say. Not everybody's going to agree with you. But that's okay. It's okay on the online community. 